This will be the second part in your lesson. Hopefully after the first piece, you have some comfort level in drying compounds with single or multiple bonds, drying polyatomic ions. I can't emphasize enough the importance of practicing compound drawing at home prior to the next class. You want to be able to draw compounds with ease so that when we get into shape, we're only focusing on that aspect and not the drawing. Please take the time, give yourselves a good two hours between now and your next block class to master drawing of compounds. Now what you've seen thus far is mostly review from honors with a few new pieces with the polyatomic ions. What you're going to see now will mostly be new, but if you follow the same steps, you will be highly successful drying compounds. I find my kids are usually really solid with compound drying. We're going to take a look at molecules that don't follow the octet rule. You saw a smidge of this last year, but not a lot. This you didn't see. Molecules with an odd number of valence electrons. In every single compound that we drew so far, you had an even, doesn't matter where we look, you had an even number of valence electrons. This will be the first time that you see an odd number of valence electrons for a compound. You often see this with compounds from group 15 and 17 as they have an odd number of valence electrons. For example, nitrogen monoxide, 5 plus 6 is 11 valence electrons. This is the first time we're seeing an odd number of valence electrons. N, O, what do you want to do? Let's try. If you triple bonded this and completed the octets, how many electrons do you have? So that's no good. Let's try and double it, complete the octet. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, and you're going to have a single electron on the end. It works. However, these types of species are known as radicals. They are very, very, very reactive. They will often dimerize, so an NO will hook to another NO to form N2O2. So these are very, very reactive. How do you know that the, the, the one electron is on the end and not the other? Formal charge, excellent question. So here you have 6 minus 6 is 0, and here you have 5 minus 5 is 0. If you had done it the other way, you would have had 5 minus 6 is negative 1 and 6 minus 5 is plus 1. This is bad on multiple levels. You've introduced formal charge and they're going the wrong way because oxygen is more electronegative. It's a lone electron, and that's what makes the species so reactive. This is known as a radical, and these like to dimerize. They hook up with themselves to eliminate those lone electrons. So the whole thing is called the Correct. That's the lone electron, and the whole thing is, the species is called a radical. How about this one, NO2? Okay. 
Okay, let's try. Let's get a count. You're going to see where the count is just so critical in this next section, this one and the next. You want to do a double and a single. Complete the octet. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and you can pop that lone electron there as well. So just have one Yes, excellent point. Because you could have gone this way. So is it, if the element is the multiple, then you can change, like, because there's two O's on each side? You know, we used to really do it with perfect symmetry here, but be careful, because with that bicarbonate ion, you didn't see that perfect symmetry. Yeah. Um, you, for the, after you draw and everything, you have to do the octet rule and kind of make the full octet to the oxygen. Why don't you put the electrons on the nitrogen? Because you but you only have 17. Oh. And that's why the count's so important. Okay. Sam? Is this one too general? Let's check. Complete the octet on the terminals. You have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Nitrogen's in period two, and elements in period two cannot expand their octet, which you'll learn in just a few minutes. And that's why the electron count is so important. That's why I've stressed it. I sound like a broken record. <coughs> but when it comes to drawing complex structures at the AP level, I always go after a count first, always. Try this one. Chlorine dioxide. Um, seven, two times six is 19. No. Because it's too general? Yeah. You want to make a double? That's what I did. What do you want to do? One double, a double or a single. You want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. So this is already. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Then what'd you do? But you don't have 19 yet. So put another one under chlorine. Um, that atom does have the ability to expand its octet, and it might actually be better because here you have negative 1 and negative 1 on formal charge. Here you have 7 minus 5 is plus 2. Here you'd have 0, you'd have minus 1, and you'd have 7 minus is plus one. So yeah, this one might actually be better and it would have resonance, but I'll teach you how to expand the octet in a minute. But that's a, probably a better possibility. You don't usually see the halogens forming multiple bonds that much, so just be careful with it. Okay. So again, we have an odd number of <laughs> electrons here, we have an incomplete octet. The incomplete octet that you're probably most familiar with from honors would be one for boron trifluoride, where 
boron is one of those elements that does not form an octet of electrons. So just be careful with boron. Three bonds, no lone pairs. That's the most common example you would see. Yes, this has a trigonal planar structure. If you actually drew it perfectly, you would see that triangle formation. I'm going to skip the lone pair. Well, I'll stick them on because you'll say I forgot. But what you see here is it has that triangular structure with a bond angle of 120 degrees. That we'll get into and next then time. The other one, not the one with chlorine, sounds weird, but the other one would be trigonal perimeter. This actually would be bent. Two things attached to lone pair. Well, two things attached to non bonding groupings. Yeah. Trigonal, trigonal pyramidal is like ammonia with three things attached, oh, yeah, yeah. one lone pair. We'll get into that next time. What I really want to spend a little bit of time on here, and I want you to get a lot of practice time in, are expanded octets. The atom with the expanded valence shell contains either more than four bonds or bonds in lone pairs, but you'll have more than an octet of electrons. Here's the key written in blue. Only elements in period three or higher can have expanded octets. Does a 2D subshell exist? No. no. So you're never going to see an element in period two with an expanded octet. Never nitrogen, never oxygen, never carbon, never fluorine. Nothing from period two. It's got to be period three or higher. A 3D subshell does exist, period three or higher. You're going to follow the same steps with one difference. Again, get the valence count. That's critical. Draw the skeletal structure. Complete octets of terminal atoms first. Leftover electrons can go on the central atom. Let's take a look. The first one is bromine pentafluoride. And again, if you can't formula right at this stage of the game, you need to go back to your summer assignment. Boron, not boron, bromine, <laughs> penta, I don't know what, what planet I'm on. I have no idea. I looked at one and went to the other. I'll get it. Bromine, penta, fluoride. Guess I better go back to the summer assignment. All right. I think I said penta, so I wrote P. <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> yeah, go figure. Anyway, here we go. Here's my sad face. Central atom here is going to be bromine. Get your count. Seven for bromine. Seven for bromine, five fluorine, each with seven, 42 valence electrons. Bromine's going to be central. One, two, three, four, five fluorine. Complete the oct guys, let's refocus. Complete the octets <laughs> on the fluorines. <clears throat> now with your count, make life easy. You have six dots on each fluorine. You have five fluorines. Six times five without a calculator is? 30. 30. Now watch. Take your finger to count. 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. I don't have enough electrons. I need a lone pair of electrons on the bromine. 
Keep that pair together. Don't put it between a stick and the atom. And please don't separate the two electrons and say, oh, it'll look prettier, one on each side. No, 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 no. It'll be expensive. Alrighty, I'll pay attention on this one. Sulfur, S, tetrafluoride, F, T, right? Four, just kidding. Give it a shot. Don't be peeking at mine. See you peeking. Now, if you do not get a count, you're going to make a mistake. You have 6 times 4 is 24, 26, 28. 30, 32, what's missing? A lone pair on sulfur. Piece of cake, right? Why'd you say you were missing? Because you wouldn't have those. You'd forget them. You'd go, oh, the octet's complete. Woohoo, it looks like carbon tetrafluoride. And you'll make a mess. It looks like a mess no matter what. Okay. I guess it's supposed to be Phosphorus. Pentachloride. Go. Did you get what I got? Can't emphasize enough the importance of practicing these before your next class. Here's two more. Give it a shot. I'm coming. One sec. Wait. Try these two. They're on the screen. Try these two. <laughs> yeah. He has six minus. Did you get this? Good. Keep going. Guys, marching has nothing to do with drying compounds. Let's focus.
Alan, you got them both? This is what I got. You can check. Cool. Compound drawing is really kind of fun. We're going to get into the shapes next time. You'll see an octahedral shape and a square planar, but we'll get into that next time. It doesn't matter how many balls you make. That would be expanded on that. You typically don't see more than six. Anything is fine. Four four bonds, two lone pairs. And again, can't emphasize enough the importance of mastering compound drawing before your next class. A couple more things I want to take a look at. They really fit together. We've already alluded. We've already alluded to bond length. When we drew the resonance structures, we mentioned a bond length similar to one and a half, something between a single and a double. Bond order is what truly explains bond length. So when you have single bonds, you have a bond order of one, double bonds, bond order of two, triple bond order of three, or you can have in between, like one and a third, one and a half, one and two thirds, etc. When you have resonance is when you see these fractional bond orders, and we already also alluded to how you would figure that out. The number of bonds divided by the number of atoms attached directly to the central atom. So we looked at ozone. Here's a sulfate ion. How many resonance structures for a sulfate ion? Six. Six. So what you can see here you can calculate the bond order, but your explanation is not your calculation. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six bonds divided by the four identical oxygen atoms attached to the sulfur. Six over four is three halves or one and a half. What you really have here is six bonds allowing four oxygen atoms to be attached to the sulfur. Similarly, with the ozone, you had two oxygens attached to a central oxygen through three bonds. Essentially, you've just got a composite of everything. The average of two ones and two twos will be one and a half. And you can take a look at bond order in a little more detail, I'll give you a do now next time that explores that. Bond length we're not really going to get into except you already know that as the radius of the atom increases, the atoms cannot get as close together, hence a larger distance between them. What I do want to go over is how to calculate bond energy. next time. <laughs> so with bond, I did it in second hour, but I'm going to hold it here. Bond energy is where we will pick up in your class for next time. It's going to look like delta H calculations, but it's backward. For next time, you want a solid understanding of drawing compounds, because by next time, I expect you can draw them. We'll be determining shape, hybridization, and polarity.